Welcome to the channel where medical topics are made simple. This video explains bronchiolitis, and at the end, we're going to show you what to know for your exams, so make sure to watch the entire video. You can also follow along in our Teach Me Medicine book. This book reviews bronchiolitis and hundreds of other topics. It's full of memory tricks and simple explanations. The book will be linked down below. First, we have to ask ourselves, what is bronchiolitis? And the easiest way to do this is to break down the word. We have bronchial, which refers to the bronchioles, which are the small airways in the lungs. And we have itis, which means inflammation. So if we bring it together, bronchiolitis is inflammation of the bronchioles, or the small airways of the lungs. This inflammation is typically caused by a viral infection, with RSV being the most common. We'll talk more about RSV shortly, but first let's take a closer look at the bronchioles. In order to do this, let's zoom in on the respiratory system and look at the anatomy of the bronchial tree. The bronchial tree, or the tracheobronchial tree, is the network of branching airways in the lower respiratory tract that conduct air from the trachea to the alveoli. So first we have the trachea. The trachea is also known as the windpipe, and it's the main trunk of the bronchial tree that allows air to travel from the nose or mouth to the lungs. The trachea then divides or splits into the right and left main bronchi. The right main bronchus allows air to enter the right lung, and the left main bronchus allows air to enter the left lung. The main bronchi are also called the primary bronchi. The right and left main bronchi then divide further into the lobar bronchi. The lobar bronchi are also called the secondary bronchi, and they supply air to the different lobes of the lungs, which is why they're called lobar. The lobar bronchi then divide into segmental bronchi. Segmental bronchi are also called tertiary bronchi, and they supply air to specific segments within each lobe of the lung, which is why they're called segmental. The segmental bronchi divide into even smaller airways called bronchioles, which we're going to zoom in on. Conducting bronchioles branch into smaller terminal bronchioles, which branch into even smaller respiratory bronchioles. The respiratory bronchioles terminate in the alveolar ducts, which connect to the alveolar sacs. The alveolar sacs are clusters of alveoli. The alveoli is where gas exchange occurs between the lungs and blood. Remember we said earlier, bronchiolitis is inflammation of the bronchioles, so inflammation is taking place in these tiny airways. Let's look at how this is happening. As we mentioned before, bronchiolitis is typically caused by a viral infection. The most common virus is respiratory syncytial virus, or RSV. When an infected person coughs or sneezes, the virus can spread through respiratory droplets. The virus can also spread if a non-infected person comes in close contact with an infected person or a contaminated surface. The virus can then enter a non-infected person through the eyes, nose, or mouth and travel down to the bronchioles. As the virus travels through the airways to the bronchioles, the airway epithelial cells become infected, causing inflammation in the airways. The black line represents inflammation in the bronchioles. This inflammation in the bronchioles is what causes bronchiolitis, in this case from RSV. Now take a close look at all that inflammation in the bronchioles. You'll see how it causes the airways to become narrow. There's edema or swelling present, and there's airway obstruction. It also causes increased mucus production and air trapping, and causes decreased lung compliance and ventilation. This is why you see all the respiratory symptoms in bronchiolitis, which we'll talk about shortly. But first, let's talk about what you need to know about bronchiolitis for exams. Do not skip this part of the video because it's high yield, so make sure to keep watching. Starting with who gets bronchiolitis, bronchiolitis typically occurs in children less than two years old, but can occur at any age. And it's most common in infants less than six months old, so make sure to write that down. And it's most common in the winter months. Bronchiolitis appears in the fall, but it typically peaks in the winter. Next, what causes bronchiolitis? As mentioned before, RSV is the most common cause of bronchiolitis. Make sure to remember that. Other causes include parainfluenza virus, rhinovirus, adenovirus, coronavirus, and metanumovirus. Next, what are the risk factors of bronchiolitis or RSV? Risk factors for bronchiolitis include a premature infant, an infant less than five months old, parental smoking, 
and underlying lung disease. These risk factors also increase the risk for severe disease and symptoms. So what are the signs and symptoms of bronchiolitis? Common signs and symptoms of bronchiolitis include fever, cough, rhinorrhea, which is a runny nose, congestion, dyspnea, which is shortness of breath, tachypnea, which means rapid breathing or increased respiratory rate, and wheezing and crackles in the lungs. Poor feeding may also be present. There may be signs of respiratory distress as well, especially in more severe cases. These signs include retractions, which is when the skin and muscles between or around the ribs pull inward during inhalation. These retractions could be subcostal, which is below the rib cage, suprasternal, which is above the sternum, or intercostal, which is between the ribs. Other signs of respiratory distress or increased work of breathing include nasal flaring or grunting, cyanosis, which is bluish discoloration of the skin from decreased oxygen in the blood, head bobbing, labored breathing, and accessory muscle usage with breathing. Now that we know the signs and symptoms of bronchiolitis, how do you diagnose it? The easiest way to think about the diagnosis is to split bronchiolitis into two categories. We have mild to moderate disease, and we have moderate to severe disease. Most cases of bronchiolitis can be diagnosed clinically from the symptoms we just talked about. This means that imaging and labs may not always be necessary, especially if they're an infant with mild classic symptoms. A respiratory viral panel could be used. This is a swab that goes into the nostril and it tests for common viruses such as RSV and influenza. This can help diagnose RSV or other specific viruses that can cause bronchiolitis. If the symptoms are more moderate or severe, or if there is concern for other diagnoses, such as pneumonia, then a chest x-ray could be performed. In bronchiolitis, the chest x-ray may show viral airway disease. Blood work may also be considered in more severe cases, such as a CBC or complete blood count, a chemistry, an ABG or arterial blood gas, among others. Now that we know how bronchiolitis is diagnosed, how do you treat it? The easiest way to think about the treatment is to again split bronchiolitis into two categories, like we did with diagnosis. We have mild to moderate disease and moderate to severe disease. Mild to moderate bronchiolitis can typically be treated outpatient with supportive care. This includes nasal suction, nasal saline, and humidifiers to help with congestion. Hydration is also important. Antipyretics such as acetaminophen or Tylenol can be used for fever and to ease symptoms. No specific medications are typically necessary. In more severe cases, this may need to be treated inpatient or with close monitoring. Treatment may include oxygen and breathing support. This can be in the form of nasal cannula, high flow, CPAP, or intubation in the most severe cases. IV fluids may be necessary for hydration. Unlike asthma treatment where breathing treatments and steroids can be helpful, in bronchiolitis, breathing treatments such as bronchodilators and steroids have not been shown to be overall effective. A couple RSV immunizations are also emerging, so be aware of that as well. However, make sure to use clinical judgment and follow institutional protocols. And remember this treatment is for educational purposes only. Now that we know the treatment of bronchiolitis, what are some of the complications? Complications of bronchiolitis may include acute respiratory distress and or respiratory failure, apnea, which is temporary cessation of breathing, cyanosis, which is bluish discoloration of the skin or lips caused by low oxygen levels in the blood. Bronchiolitis can also turn into or be complicated by pneumonia. In rare occasions, bacterial involvement such as pneumonia can turn into sepsis, which is when the body has an extreme immune response to an infection. Bronchiolitis can also lead to recurrent infections, especially RSV. Bronchiolitis can be complicated by hypoxia, which is low oxygen supply to tissues, tachypnea, and dehydration. It's important to remember not all bronchiolitis cases involve complications, and this is simply for education only. Now that we understand bronchiolitis, here are the key concepts you need to know for your exams. Bronchiolitis most commonly occurs in infants less than six months old, and typically in children less than two years old. It's common in the winter months. RSV is the most common cause. Symptoms may lead to retractions. Bronchiolitis involves the lower respiratory tract, especially the bronchioles. 
So an exam question about bronchiolitis may have a four-month-old infant presenting in January with three days of worsening fever, cough, and nasal congestion. During the last 12 hours, there has been increased respiratory wheezing and intercostal retractions. While other diagnoses are possible, you should be considering bronchiolitis and RSV should be a possible cause. The clues in the prompt are underlined and include the age of four months, presenting in January, symptoms of fever, cough, and nasal congestion, along with wheezing and retractions on physical exam. Hopefully this helped you understand bronchiolitis. Please share this video with others and hit that like button and leave a comment. Subscribe to Save Time Studying and not miss out on future videos and notes. You can find all of our flashcards, notes for the videos, and book linked down below. Thanks for watching and hope you return for future videos.